Well, hello, Christ Community Church. This is my um, video version of my meditation for May 23rd um, to go in the newsletter. And the two passages I'm considering today are Matthew 6, verse 10, and Hebrews 4, verses 14 to 15. Matthew 6 is, contains what we call the Lord's Prayer. I prefer to think of it as the disciples' prayer. It's the prayer he taught the disciples to pray. And um, in the middle of that prayer, we find these, this is verse 10. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In Hebrews 4, verses 14 and 15, we read this. Since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, Yet he did not sin. Hebrews 4, verses 14 and 15. On earth as it is in heaven is such an important phrase in the prayer Jesus taught us. This past Thursday, this week, was Ascension Day on our Christian calendars. It's a day when we pause to consider what that means. The Ascension is really a huge event in the unfolding of God's redemption plan. We consider that Jesus ascended, rose, lifted, was lifted bodily in the flesh, through the skies, back to heaven, having accomplished his vision and mission on earth. Many times when I've tried to do a children's message related to this in churches, um, I've uh, used a helium balloon and would take, the first time I did it, I took the kids all outside and we imagined being the disciples standing there watching Jesus rise from, their, from our presence. And as I, then I would release the balloon and, until the kids could see it no more. You know, meanwhile, all the adults are waiting in church for the kids to come back in with me. Uh, somebody objected to the environmental danger that was, including for some for birds and things like that. So from then on, I would do it inside of churches. And what happened the last time I did it, and I so now I don't do it anymore, is uh, that I released the balloon in church. And the kids were all standing with me, imagining they were the disciples watching Jesus rise. And the balloon rose and rose and rose and then got sucked into the ceiling fan. Uh, deal with that theologically. And so then I had to work that in somehow. <laughs> and... Uh, but in other churches where there was no, so since then I don't watch for a ceiling fan, I check out, I turn off the ceiling fans. And then I ask the kids, so when do you think that balloon is going to come down again? And that becomes then a way of thinking about when will Jesus return? And so they try and I get them to predict. And so it becomes fun. The one time that it has worked well with no accidents uh, that Kids are eager to get to church on Sunday so they can see if Jesus came down again yet. That's ascension. And it's worth reflecting on, which is why I chose it as a topic for this meditation. We describe the meaning of the ascension or what it, what it represents, what it's all about, as God had come to us lived as one of us, faced the same challenges to maintaining relationship with the Holy One that we do, 
and succeeded where all humanity fails and has failed. And it was not an easy journey for him. Think about what he gave up to come down here and then what he suffered on our behalf while he was here. So it was not an easy journey to come from heaven to earth. And to be the most innocent of all wrong, of anyone ever, to be pure and innocent of all wrong, and yet quietly accept the injustice and torture and death itself in that machination. And all of that for the sake of the rest of humanity. All of that for the sake of the rest of humanity, meaning you and I and all humanity. Well, when I think about it, I, I don't think I could do it. Could you? And as we contemplate that, our gratitude at the magnitude of his love broadens and deepens. If you just spend quiet time thinking about that, it changes you. Jesus lived with the way of the kingdom of God in view. Not according to the ways of the kingdoms of this world. This is hugely important to understand. This is why I'm posting my messages on how that kingdom works, the kingdom of God, on this channel as well. It is so key. It has been a key understanding to my faith journey, to my journey out of religiosity and obedience to try and earn my salvation myself retroactively to leaving myself into or uh, submitting myself into God's hands through what Christ has done and then letting God and Christ and the Spirit unfold in my life what they see needs to happen. I'm still learning how this works trying to live the way of the kingdom of God in a world that does not understand how that works. And sometimes even in a church that has lost touch with the ways of the kingdom of God. So it's hugely important to me, and I hope I convey some of that importance to you in those messages. Worldly ways had corrupted the religious understanding of the faith Jesus was born into. And it continues to do the same for us today. We need to be on guard against it. Whenever we hear Jesus speaking harshly, it was when addressing corrupted and blind spirituality and the resulting misguided religiosity. Jesus offered himself as the ultimate sacrifice so all things could begin to be restored. When the day comes that the ways of the kingdom of God are lived by all humanity, every knee will bow, you know that part, right? When the ways of the kingdom of God are lived by all humanity, the restoration will be complete. Until then, we and hopefully we do this with some sense of desperation, we pray that things on earth may come to be as they already are in heaven, in the kingdom of God, with the first person having entered in the flesh bodily, and when they arrive there, beginning to receive perpetual praise. Go and read Revelation chapter 5. Read the whole thing, but particularly verses 6 to 13. And then just sit for a while in verse 12. And imagine what that must be like. This praise that the slain lamb receives and received. 
24-7 if there are clocks in heaven. What happens in heaven is what we try to live out in our collective and individual worship here on earth. So when we create a worship service, we're trying to reenact here on earth that thing that is happening in Revelation chapter 5. Until this restoration is complete, we do have an intervener in heaven who understands our weakness. He knows us. He knows what we face. And who died to show his love nonetheless, knowing we were weak. Maybe all the more because he understood our weakness more. And who died to open another way back into relationship in the, to the Father that did not need to be earned anymore. He earned it for us. All the clutter in between us and God can be removed if we turn to God in faith out of what we believe Jesus did for us. Until that restoration is complete, we are called to strengthen that relationship with God with the help of our intervener, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit while we live on this earth so that the kingdom of God may come to earth. And more and more, things on earth will be like the way things are in heaven. That's what we're saying in that one phrase out of, in the middle of that beautiful prayer Jesus taught his disciples to pray. May it be more and more the truth in your life, in all of our lives, that we are living the ways of the kingdom of God here on earth, bringing heaven down to earth. Till we meet again, shalom and serenity to you all.